neighbor and say, peace be with you. And your neighbor replies, and also with you. <laughs> this week, we will be hearing testimonies from our church family about what God has done for them. King David talks about testimonies in Psalm 145 when he says, I will exalt you, my God and King, and praise your name forever and ever. I will praise you every day. Yes, I will praise you forever. Great is the Lord. He is most worthy of praise. No one can measure his greatness. Let each generation tell its children of your mighty acts. Let me proclaim your power. I will meditate on your majestic, glorious splendor and your wonderful miracles. Your awe-inspiring deeds will be on every tongue. I will proclaim your greatness. Everyone will share the story of your wonderful goodness. They will sing with joy about your righteousness. The Lord is merciful and compassionate, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. The Lord is good to everyone. He showers compassion on all his creation. All of your works will thank you, Lord, and your faithful followers will praise you. They will speak of the glory of your kingdom. They will give examples of your power. They will tell about your mighty deeds and about the majesty and glory of your reign. For your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. You rule throughout all generations. Let us open our service today and pray the remaining of Psalm 145 together. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for keeping your promises and being gracious in all you do. Thank you for helping the fallen and for lifting those who are bent beneath our loads. Our eyes look to you in hope. Thank you for providing for us and for satisfying the hunger and thirst of every living thing. We praise you for you are righteous in all that you do and you are filled with kindness. Thank you for being close to all of us who call on you. Yes, to all who call on you in truth. Thank you for granting the desires of those who fear you. Hear our cries for help and rescue us. We trust that you protect those who love you, but you destroy the wicked. We will praise you, Lord, and may everyone on earth bless your holy name forever and ever. Amen. Let us worship our great and loving God together. Let's stand together and worship together. Give thanks to the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King, His love endures forever. Faithful. 
may be seated. I am so thankful. I want to thank so many of you. I know it's hard. We have a small window of beautiful weather here in Manitoba where the sun is out and it's warm. Well, we have lots of sun. It's just often cold. And I want to thank so many of you that make the effort to come in the summer to be here, to be a part of this service. I know some of you even come back early just to make it to this service. And I want to thank you again for making the effort. Uh, Today is a celebration uh, service. And we are going to be celebrating what God has been doing in people's lives historically, but also what God is doing currently. See, this is not just a story of long ago. These are going to be stories of how God is continuing to work in the lives of his people because he is Emmanuel, the God that is with us. I want to just read this to you in 2 Timothy in chapter 3, verses 16 to 17. It says, all scripture, all of it is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true, to make us realize what is wrong in our lives It corrects us when we are wrong, teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. You hear the words, all, everything, over and over again in regards to God's word. See, the Bible is inspired by God. It is true and it makes us realize and yes, come to grips with our failure in life. That's called sin. 
and then teaches us what to do, what is right, and how to go and live a different life, discover a life worth living. It equips us and trains us to be more effective for God's kingdom. It gives us a calling. It gives us purpose. And see, God's word is speaking into our lives today, not just way back then, but today. This is the living revelation that continues to speak into our lives by the power of the Holy Spirit. See, God's word is alive. And that is so important that we see that because sometimes we can make the mistake of distancing ourselves from God's word. We can analyze it. We can prod it. We can look at it like a, like a scientific experiment. And if we read it from a distance, that's a great tragedy. I believe we need to be more open to God speaking into our lives through his word. We need to humble ourselves before the mighty presence of God. And yes, as we do so, we will discover that the word of God is alive and speaking into our lives. You discover as, the, as you read the word, and not just reading it from a distance, but as you delve into God's word with a heart that is open and willing to listen, you will hear the Holy Spirit speaking. You will understand more of who the great creator of this universe is. And when you say yes to Jesus, you will discover that the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, is living inside of you and comforting, correcting, equipping, leading you into the great unknown. That great unknown is called life. You have the privilege to have the God of the universe tabernacle within you. That is reside within you at the center of who you are and help you to face the adventure that is in front of you. Whatever that adventure might look like. And it's a life of adventure. It's not a life of dread or fear or riddled with anxiety. And the reason it's not is because even though it is the great unknown, like Abraham having to go to the land of Canaan, it is the great unknown, but you have the God of the universe going with you. And therefore, it is an adventure that I want to encourage you to embrace. Because if God is with you, who can stand against you? Hallelujah. And that is what we are going to share today. These are people, everyday people. They're not professional uh, speakers. They don't speak weekly from the pulpit like I do. But they have a heart that is, was open to hearing the good news of Jesus Christ. And God got a hold of their heart. And you're going to hear these stories today. Some of them are veterans, have been in the church a long time. Others are newer to the faith. But this is what you're getting today. And I pray that if there is someone here in this sanctuary or on this live stream that is exploring faith, maybe they have some questions. I hope that as you listen to these testimonies, God will reveal himself to you more and more, that you will draw closer to God, and yes, you will discover this adventurous life with the living God. And so I want to call up our first couple. These are some of our veterans that have been in the church, uh, have been in, uh, been in the the Christianity and been in churches for quite some time. So I asked if, if I could start with them. And that is Will and Edith, or we also call her Edie Peters, are going to come on up here. And they're going to share their story with you today. As they are saying, uh, they want to be part of this church family. They have recently come to this church and they have fit in so well to our faith family. We're so pleased to have both of you. And I just, I'm going to move you a little closer there, just so we get it on the live stream. I just want to say, uh, 
Will and Edie, um, we are an international church and you've got a little taste of that since being here. And we have a lot of people from a lot of different places all around the world. And many of those people that are here in Canada, it's been a very tough adjustment. It hasn't been easy. Some of them have come because they had to flee. Others have come willfully. But I want to say this, many of them are dealing with the loss. They don't have their family here. They're trying to adjust to Canada. They're dealing with loneliness. And I want to say to you, as, as faithful followers of Jesus for some time now, I want to say that you have the opportunity, and I will just say it, the privilege to be mom and dads, grandpa and grandmas, to a lot of people in this church. And I'm talking spiritually be that to them. And I pray that you would have that calling here at Portage Avenue because we need that here. We have a lot of people that are needing that support. They need to know that they have grandparents here and parents here. I just think of, it came to my mind when I was praying for the two of you in Leviticus. It's also found in Deuteronomy. You can read it over and over again. God's people, God's command to his people is to care for the sojourner. But it's not just the outsider to care for them. Afterwards, it says to love them as you love yourself. And love is sacrifice. And then the next part, God says, every time he talks about the sojourner, he says these words, remember when you were in Egypt. Remember when you were slaves. Don't forget that. And now you're living free. All of us were once slaves to sin. And Jesus Christ saved us. And you have such a beautiful story. And you have a witness for this community that we are so thankful that you're here and wanting to make this church your home. Could you please share your story with us? Thank you. My name is Will Peters. I was born in Saskatchewan, Swift Current, Saskatchewan, and grew up in a Christian home. As a child, our neighbor sponsored a child's religious after school midway midweek group in their family home and was sponsored by actually a Mennonite church. As a wind up one year, the church sponsored a picnic for several of these light groups. It was at this picnic, a minister asked children who wanted to give their lives to Christ to do so. So I did. Our family attended a United Church for many years. When I was 12 years old, our family all joined the church and were baptized at that time. As the years passed, I continued to attend several different United Churches and served on the boards of two of those. My wife Edith and I were married in Westminster United Church in 1977. Since then, we have attended the Presbyterian Church and then 32 years ago, moved to Westwood Community Church. I served one term on the board decades ago. I've also served many years as an usher at that church. We were involved in helping cater to various functions years ago, and we also took part in the leadership of a senior's monthly meetings. Edie and I twice have spent two months with MDS building houses in Louisiana. In fact, the new felts that attend this church, we got to acquaint with them at that point. Three times I myself have spent a week helping at MDS projects in the United States. I was a teacher for 32 years before I retired. Several years ago, while I was teaching elementary school, two of our fellow teachers and I became and had religious ceremonies before school. And in fact, one of them was Jeremy Penner and his family's children. And after I retired, I worked part-time for five and a half years as a counselor at a home 
for people with mental diseases. My favorite verse from the Bible is from Exodus 15:2. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. He is my God and I will praise him. My Father's God and I will exalt him. Thank you very much. Good morning, I'm Amy Peters. I was born and raised in Winnipeg. I grew up in the north end of Winnipeg, among many cultures, languages, religions. My best friend was from Poland. We met when she couldn't speak English, and we are still friends to this day. I grew up in a family of five children. Unfortunately, one left us a few months ago. We are a very, very close family. The Bible verse that's been helping me through this difficult time was given to me by my nephew. Be strong and courageous. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. As a family, we attended the United Church, but it wasn't until I went to high school and met my friends who attended Calvary Temple, where my faith really grew. They would take me every Sunday night to church with them. Their mother was a great role model. I met my husband, Will, at church. We were married in 1907 and were blessed with two wonderful children and have since been blessed with two grandchildren. Our children attend, attended Winnipeg, night, Winnipeg Men Entry School, WMES, and MBCI. At WMES, I became active and met groups of other mothers. We started attending the church, the school chapels, and a Christian women's club. The Bible verse that has been meaningful to this time is Proverbs 22.6. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. We are all still friends today, and I was at, Christ, it was at Christian's Women's Club that I accepted the Lord. After starting Westwood Community Church, I was baptized. 25 years ago, I started attending Bible Study Fellowship, which is an international but non-denominational Bible study, where my love and knowledge of the Lord really grew. Through the Bible study, I have learned to go to scripture whenever there is something I doubt or don't agree with. The Bible is the final authority. That is what brings us to this church because it considers the Bible the final authority. Stay up here. You're not going anywhere yet. So, church family, you heard these testimonies. I would ask that you could stand in affirmation of these testimonies. Uh, church family, we do this. Uh, it's very important. I can't have everybody come on up, but can we just put our hand out? And let's, we're going to lay hands on this couple, and we're going to pray for them right now. Let's go before the living God. Lord Jesus, we come before you today and we thank you that you have drawn Will and Edie here to Portage Avenue Church. And we pray, Lord Jesus, that you would equip them, that they would be able to utilize their gifts just to the fullest extent as they are here serving your kingdom. Lord Jesus, bless them. And may you give them clarity of what you want of them here. I pray that you would give them the visions and the dreams, what they need to do, Lord, as they are here at this church. I pray, Lord Jesus, that we would be a support to them and we would continue to pray for them as they are serving your kingdom. Lord Jesus, bless them and utilize them mightily here at Portage Avenue Church. We pray this in Jesus' name, the name above every name. Can God's people please say? Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Thank you, Will. Thank you, Edie. All right. So uh, next we have Jamie. Jamie, could you please come on up? Yes, let's put our hands together. Now, Jamie, I, I just want to say um, we met, I, I met with, well, we've been talking about uh, joining the church for quite some time. Let's just be honest about it. You've been here for about four years, came during COVID or right before? Like a, month. a month before, and then COVID hit. Yeah. 
and you stuck with us. Hallelujah. But Deanna and I met with you this week, and we were just beaming because we don't get these kind of meetings all the time. But it was just such a wonderful, like, we're going away here for a little bit, but we needed to hear that encouragement because, Jamie, what you said is, well, we sort of ask people, well, why Portage Avenue Church? What, what made you come here? Why are you still here? And you said, Jamie, well, it's because of the young adults. And I have so, so many friends, and that's why I'm drawn here. And I just thought, Deanna and I just smiled, because nine years ago, we would have no young adults saying that. And for us, it was such an encouragement that it means things are changing. And it doesn't mean we've got it all together, but we're on the road and we're making some of those changes. And we're so thankful that you have a support team here of young adults that are here and supporting you. And so I just want to say these words to you before you begin. Uh, I I was praying for you and uh, you can find this in Romans chapter eight, but I'm going to read it from Galatians as well. It says, God sent him, that is Jesus, to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law so that, we, so that he could adopt us as his very own children. And because we are his children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, prompting us to call out, Abba, Father. Now you are no longer a slave, but God's own child. And since you are his child, God has made you his heir. You are a child to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And as you continue to live out that identity, you will draw more and more people into his kingdom. So could you share your story with us? Hi. Um, If you don't know me already, my name is Jamie. I grew up in a Christian home and attended the Concordia Church of God for most of my life. Uh, This church was such a blessing for me and my family Uh, When my parents moved to Canada from Germany in 2000, the Church of God, being a German church, made the transition much smoother for them and my siblings. Surrounded by fellow Germans, we were able to make a strong friendship that we now consider family. Uh, During my teenage years, I was a part of a wonderful youth group where I had the opportunity to go out and evangelize in our community every Wednesday in the malls, parks, and many other places. It was so incredible to see so many people come to Christ and to pray for others. This experience significantly strengthened my faith and I got saved later that year. In that same year, on June 5th, 2017, I was baptized at the age of 15. However, life became a bit more challenging afterward. In 2018, I met somebody who negatively impacted my faith, leading me away from God. For two years, it was difficult for me and my family, and I had felt very lost. In 2020, I realized I needed to end that relationship, which took a lot of courage. It was a tough period, but that same month, my brother Kevin started attending Portage Avenue Church, and he invited me to join him for a service. At my previous church, I often felt something was missing. And when I started attending Portage Avenue Church with my brother, I was struck by the vibrant community of the young adults. It was refreshing to see such a close-knit and supportive group. After just one service, I knew this is where I wanted to be. And I was eager to make new friends. This group of friends was exactly what I needed during that challenging time. Now, four years later, I am blessed with an amazing group of friends and a church that feels like home. I am incredibly grateful for the journey that led me here and thank God every day. A verse I'd like to end my testimony with is Jeremiah 29 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Thank you. So church family, you heard this testimony today, and for some of you that can speak German, you got your German speaking girl right here, all right? Oh, somebody, I heard some clapping, okay. So we are a diverse group, and so we have languages and cultures from all over the world, and we're so thankful that you're making this church your home. You've stuck it out during COVID, and we're so thankful you're here. Could we as a church stand up in affirmation? And we're going to just, we're going to put our hands out. We're going to pray for Jamie right now. Jamie, I'm going to pray. 
Lord Jesus, we come before you today and we thank you for Jamie. We thank you for her story. We thank you for her honesty as she shares her testimony that you have brought her out of so much, Lord, and you continue to encourage her and you continue to reveal more of yourself to her. And I just ask, Lord Jesus, that you would make yourself more and more known to her that as she walks in her identity of who she is as a daughter to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, that you will draw more and more people to her and that she will have an impact. She will be an agent of change for a society that is often very destructive. Lord, I pray that you would bless her and I thank you, Lord, that she is here. I pray, Lord Jesus, that we as a church would be an encouragement and we would be a place that helps equip and train Jamie to go out and make disciples in your name, in your authority. Lord Jesus, thank you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. What do we say, family? Amen. 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 Thank you, Jamie. Okay, so what is next is worship. Worship team. Worship music. Come on up. Let's continue to worship the living God. Yeah, we invite you to stand. Let's continue singing, worshiping together about God's faithfulness to us. I'll 
Jeremy, I'm waiting for you to get back there. I will not do anything until you're back there, okay? You may be seated. Sorry about that. Uh, This is a rather unusual part of our service, but you need to realize, and if you're on the live stream today, we are an international church. That means we are a group of people that are from many different nations from around the world, and some nations are more restrictive than others. 
And so what that means for security reasons, if you are watching this on the live stream, what this means is we are actually at this point going to cut the live stream feed for security reasons so that others can share their testimony. We will come back.
up when we're ready. We're ready. All right, live stream. Thank you again. Sorry we had to take a little break, but we are back at it now. Uh, worship team, let's continue to lift up praise to the living God.
church family before we close as a church family we wanted to pray for Jed and their family if you want to come up and I also would like to call the leadership team the council if you could also come up and, and we pray together and I just want to say a few words before we do that um, yeah we're kind of a small group today but uh, yeah if you're on the council if you want to just come up for the past 10 years Jed you've been tirelessly working for the church and uh, we truly saw that you were you were there for us. You were running, and a lot of times you sacrificed your family, your time, your personal time, your personal time with the Lord, which is very important. <laughs> but I know, like sometimes those urgent situations cause you to, um, you know, give attention to that matter. And we really are grateful for that. But ultimately, the Lord saw that, mm -hmm. and we're so grateful that uh, you served the church for that for 10 years without taking a break. Um, and, um, and I know it's, this is not a break. You were kind of <laughs> very um, straightforward in saying that, but I do believe that this is the time where you can, you can kind of focus more on the Lord and really pursue Him and, and, and give time to your family and your growing family, your kids. And as I was uh, worshiping the Lord and um, you were singing, uh, about his faithfulness, the, my, uh, my mind gravitated towards Exodus 34. And it said, right, you know that very, very well. And I believe this is your heartbeat, where Moses says, Lord, if you don't come with us, we don't want to go. And I believe this is your heart, that, Lord, you're leading us into a new season. And if you're not coming with us, I don't, I don't want to go there. And, and then uh, Moses said, show me your glory. And I pray that this time you will see God's glory. You would seek his face and that next step. And also, we're not, we're not gonna be worshiping the golden calf, okay? All right, just, just to be clear, <laughs> this is the time for the church family to seek the Lord as well. <laughs> I wanted to mention that to be clear. But yeah, I believe that when you do come back, your face will shine. And, and, and people around you will, will will walk with the Lord to that next step, next season that the Lord has for us, for, for Portage Avenue Church. So um, let us lay hands on, uh, do you, can we have the whole family come? Is it possible? <laughs> and then we just pray for the whole family. Somebody. <laughs> I just lay, as Jet said, let's lay our hands on the family and they'll pray. Um, Father, we thank you so much for Jed and Deanna and the kids, Lord. We thank you for their dedication and their love for the church. 
Lord, this is a reflection of their love for you, your bride. Loving your bride is, is also loving you, Lord. And we are so grateful for that. We're grateful for the service, for the, for the time, for, for the prayer and the crying out, Lord, for, for the church family, for your presence to be here, for the spirit to be working in us and through us, Lord. We thank you for those uh, prayers, for that uh, dedication. And as they go, as they you know, have, um, have time, more dedicated, focused time for you and seeking your face, we pray that you would show up, Lord, that you, you would meet them there, that your presence would be um, experienced, Lord, in their lives and their kids' lives. And as also they make connections with um, missions and, and um, ministries, churches, Lord, that you would um, set a, how should I say this, that you would direct the church in the direction that we should go as you go with us, Lord. And we want to reiterate the Moses prayer that, Lord, if, we don't, if you don't go, we don't want to go there. Lord, we want your presence to be guiding as, as it says, you know, a cloud or a fire and by night, Lord, we want to follow you wherever you lead us. And Lord, I also want to pray for us, the church family. You know, this time away will be, will be a little bit difficult. I know that. And help us to lean on you. Help us to draw closer to you, that we will be pursuing you above all else, not um, leading on any person, specific person or people, that we would be drawn to you. I pray that all in your name, Jesus. May your name be glorified. May your name be praised in this church, in our lives, in our families. Amen. 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 Thank you, thank you, brother. Thank you all. Thank you, thank you. You may be seated. Well, we, we, have, a, we have a picnic to go to, church family. And I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I know that Deanna and I are, are, are sad to step away for a little bit, but we know it's needed to grow and study and learn. And so please keep us in your prayers. We have wonderful, wonderful people coming to share God's word with you starting next week. Uh, Greg Weens will be here next week. Onward, we will have wonderful wonderful Bible teachers, Pierre Jalbert and Murray Fraze. I do hope you will continue to press in and we will continue to grow. Uh, church family, I want you to know that if you heard these testimonies today and maybe you're saying, I, I need prayer, maybe there's something about these testimonies that's touched my heart, or maybe you're just, you're here today and you're saying, I need to experience that healing in my life. If that is you, we have a prayer team that is here uh, available, ready. Church family, I'd ask for the five that have, have joined this church, please go, go up to them, greet them, welcome them, and hopefully we'll see all of you at the picnic afterwards. Amen? All right, for my last benediction, I'm going to do my favorite one. Could you please stand? It says, to the king of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, to him be all glory and power forever and ever. Can God's people please say? Amen. Amen. Go in the power of Jesus Christ. Amen.